So I love when people break things down to be super simple so I can understand what they're talking about. And you want to do that on your website. Don't get technical. Don't be confusing. Be direct in what it is that you that you offer. Well, just like last week, it's yours truly for today's episode where we're going to go over website layouts that work. And you might be like, okay, it's a podcast. I can't really see examples here. So I'm going to try to depict it perfectly as best I can in audio form. What you should do, what you should change, what you should add to your website to help it convert more and just do better than probably what it's doing right now. And it'll be perfect because we're just starting out 2022. So what better way than to give your website a facelift and actually have it work for you. So stay tuned in just a few moments for the next episode of the Finally Marketing That Works podcast. Well, hello and welcome to another edition of the Finally Marketing That Works podcast. I'm your host, Mitchell Slater. It is just me again today as we go over website layouts that work. I'm sure you guys all have a website. At least I hope you do. But if you don't, you should get one. And actually, you should set it up in a way that's actually going to convert and make your company more money. And there are specific things you can do and add to your website to help it do better, to make you more money, to be easier and pleasing to the eye for people who are looking at it. We're not going to get into like nitty gritty details here, but an overarching view, giving you some tips and things to add to make it better. And so just kind of diving right in, guys. This will be a short episode. I don't want to keep you too long on this one and, and bore you to death, but I'm going to give you actionable things you can take to your web designer, developer to update for you, or maybe you do your website on your own and you can do that, or you can reach always reach out to us. We can take care of your website uh, in no time for you as well. The first piece I want you guys to know is websites, um, people look at websites in a specific way, typically in a Z pattern. So if you can you know, close your eyes and envision um have a vision of this in your web in your oh my goodness in your mind the top left of your website should be your logo and most places do this so top left will be the logo of your company because that's where people typically start and then they will they will scan to the right staying at the top of the website and the very top right there should be a call to action what is the action you want the person to do while they're on your website and this is a piece that most people were miss. And you're probably listening going, well, I don't have that. What is a call to action? What, what, what's a button? Okay. This is where somebody, you know, go to, goes to the right corner now and there should be a button, whether it's buy now, call now, schedule now, start now, a direct call to action of what you want them to do. If you're a plumber, it could be buy now or schedule now. Uh, if you are a... A uh, hairstylist, I would probably, again, schedule now. It's very direct. You want them to schedule an appointment. You want them to take a specific action. And it's going to be different for every industry. But you want to update that call to action with what you want them to do. Then they will diagonally typically go across the screen. And this is where the big like money-making sentence should be. It should be so direct and so clean that people know within five seconds of coming to your website what it is you do and what problem it is that you solve for them. This is the piece I think almost every website misses. Yet it's like the most important part. And before I kind of jump into that, imagine going to a website, and I'm sure you guys have done this probably even in the last week, where you go and you start reading and you go, I don't even, what do they do? Like, what, what does this company do? What are they solving for me? And you just click backwards and go to the next one because you're just so lost and confused to begin with. Excuse me. It happens all the time for me. And it's so frustrating. They'll typically, the one, the one that drives me the most nuts when you go to a site, it has been in business since 1927 when my father, Phil, started the company when he was just a, a poor farm boy or whatever. Like, you're like, okay, I don't know what this doesn't, that's awesome. I love your story. Put it on the about page. It doesn't need to be on the homepage because I'm here to learn about what you offer, what you do, uh, and then I can buy your services. So don't get into the about section. 
don't use big words that people wouldn't understand if they're outside of your organization. This is something I see marketers do all the time too, where they're like, well, you need to use the analytical code of the, you know, Google analytics and the SEO and all these random ones that I can't even think of off the top of my head that are just, I know them if I'm talking to other people in the industry, but I wouldn't want to just openly put them out there for people or use it in a conversation because people are going to be like, I have no idea what you're talking about. So I love when people break things down to be super simple so I can understand what they're talking about. And you want to do that on your website. Don't get technical. Don't be confusing. Be direct in what it is that you that you offer. So if you were a, let's just use some examples here. If you were a plumber, okay, logo top left, call to action, top right. They're going to go to the middle of the page now. What do you want them to see? You don't want to say, if you are struggling at your house to have things that work correctly with your piping and the, the water that goes into your house and out of your house, you need to use somebody like us who knows plumbing. Like, oh my gosh, like that would be not what you want to do. You would go, do you have leaky pipes? We fix leaky pipes in 24 hours. Something like that. You're just so direct going, oh, I am. My pipe is leaking. I need that. Or don't have cold water in a moment. We fix that. Or something. It's so direct. You solve the problem. That's what, it, that's what you're there to do. So be direct. It, could you only, it only needs to be a couple sentences for that main part. But your goal with it is in five seconds, they know what it is you do and what problem it is you solve for them. So think about, they see your logo top left, that might not actually say what you do. Like our company is Slater Strategies. That doesn't tell you what we what we do. So you go call to action top right. Maybe it's, you know, I think our, our current one is free audit. Get a free audit. It still doesn't tell you what we do. We scan to the to the middle of the page in that Z pattern. Um, it talks about are you are you tired of are you tired of marketing that doesn't work or are you tired of whatever? Oh boom, they're a marketing company. Like we want to make sure that people figure that out pretty quickly and they're not like what does this company do? We don't want that. So you guys don't want that either. Be very direct, very to the point of what it is you solve. That's all you sh your website should be, what it is you solve for them. So now, after that section, they're bought in. They're like, okay, all right, you got me. I know what you, you do. I know what problem you solve for me. Now they're going to start scrolling. And before they start scrolling, just a little tidbit here is we always call it above the fold. So if you think of a newspaper, you guys are probably like, what's a newspaper? Okay, it is those papers that they used to print, and they still do, but they used to put them in the things you could pay 75 cents, 50 cents, whatever it was when it was like 75 cents when I was a kid, $1.50 for the Sunday paper. Uh, they would slip it in the little, oh my gosh, dispensers that you'd pay for it, and you'd only see the headline at the top, the part that was folded above the fold. It would say, you know, whatever the huge headline it was to get you to buy the paper because it was like a big one to get you to buy in. It's the same thing with your website. We talk about you want the big important things above the fold, meaning above before somebody has to start scrolling. You should you should be able to go to somebody's website, find out all that information that I just mentioned before you have to scroll. And of course, that's going to be different, a little bit different with a phone uh, or a tablet or anything like that. But just kind of picture that in your head above the fold. So now if you start scrolling, there's a part where if you you know look at our site, you'll see there's a small part where you want to empathize with the client. You know, hey, we know how we know how frustrating it is to have leaky pipes if you're a plumber, okay? If you have leaky pipes or not hot water, whatever your industry is, you want to empathize in at least one of the sections down there. You want to have another section where you share your expertise of Hey, this is what we know what we're doing. Now, I'm not talking about sharing your family history here of how long you've been in business, but showing, hey, you know, we've been doing this for, for 20 years, whatever it is. Okay. You don't have to even mention, you don't have to mention you have a degree or don't have a degree. Um, unless maybe you're a doctor, people probably want to know that. But otherwise, you really don't need to show that you have a degree or anything in any of this. And you just want to show them, like, hey, we know what we're doing. Like, we've done this for a while, um, but you don't want to just go on and on about it. Typically, one little paragraph is enough. The big part that I want you guys to have towards the bottom is how easy it is to work with you. One, two, three. You know, one, schedule an appointment. We'll use a plumber as an example. I don't know why I'm picking plumber, but we'll use plumber. One, schedule an appointment. Two, we come out and assess what's going on and give you a quote. Three, 
You sit back and relax, we fix the issue for you, no problem. You break, you take something that's so complicated, so difficult, and so scary for some people, depending on the industry you're in, and you simplify it into three steps. This is how easy it is to get it fixed. This is how easy it is to work with us. Let's say you, um, your house burned down and you need it remodeled or redone. That's like a lot. Like you don't even know where to start. You go, hey, number one, we come out, we, we assess the damage, we give you a quote. Two, we start the work um, while you relax. And three, you enjoy your home in six months or less or whatever it is. Take something so crazy, simplify it, make it where they can comprehend it in their terms. Okay, remember their terms, one, two, and three. Uh, and I, you guys are probably like wondering too where all this information came from. A lot of this stuff got from just being in the industry. The second one is Donald Miller. If you guys have not read any of his books, uh, he's one that wrote the book of Building a Story Brand. You want to read that book. It's amazing. Donald Miller has some great content. You can follow him on Instagram and Facebook as well. Uh, but you want to have those three, the, those three sections there. And then at the very top of your website, you have all those different sections people can go to. The about page, services, contact, all those. Keep only the truly important ones that need to be up there, up there. If they're not important, put them at the very bottom of the website where your phone number, your social media channels, all that call it the junk drawer put it in the junk drawer at the very very bottom of the website because it doesn't need not everything has to be at the very top it just looks cluttered so put it at the very very bottom of the website those are the main the main sections but there's two things i want you to add to your website if you don't already have them you need to have some type of lead generator on your website and that would be it could be an ebook and when i say ebook it doesn't have to be ten thousand words it could be a thousand words or less, 500 words or less, or an ebook or a checklist, something that somebody goes to your website and you're offering them for free. They just have to put in their name and email and you'll email it right over to them. So if you were, let's say, uh, um, let's go plumber again. Okay. So you're a plumber, you know, uh, the, the five, if you do a checklist, you could say, you know, the five things to check on your hot water heater before you need a new one or the, uh, the five the five reasons why the five questions to ask a plumber before you hire them something like that where they go ooh let me download that real quick and see if you know I have the questions ready and of course in that ebook or that checklist you're giving them the five things that you of course do and they are going to know that from reading the ebook because you can put your information at the bottom of it because of course you make the ebook you design it have your logo and all that they're going to know wow. This company must do all these things because they've written about it in this ebook, but you're offering it for free. You make it that one time and then it just lives on your website and you're offering it for free and you get all these email addresses. Typically you value an email about 20, 25 bucks a piece. So if you were to get a thousand emails over the course of a year, you know, it's just 25,000 bucks in emails right there. But you now what you can do with those emails, because you're going to go, okay, Mitchell, I got these emails. What do I do with them? They downloaded it. Now what do I do? Well, you, the next piece of this, once you have your lead generator of some sort, whether it's an ebook or a checklist, is you want to build out an email sequence at, at least eight to ten. Okay, but that's where that can be a fun technical uh, uh, technical term of how many to do, how you have the funnel set up. But this is just where if somebody downloads something, they're now going to get hit with these emails. Over the course of maybe eight weeks, 10 weeks, whatever you have set up in your background. But those emails are selling them on your services, your offerings, and what it is that you do for them. So that if they download it, now they're going to not just get downloaded that one time and see your name. They're going to see your name every week for the next, again, however long you do it. I would suggest at least eight to 10 emails. And let's say they don't buy. They don't buy after those eight to 10. You're like, well, that was that was useless. Nobody, They didn't even call me again continue to email them. And I would say at least once a month, send them an email, depending on your industry, you could say, you know, Hey, wishing you and your family a Merry Christmas or a happy new year. Uh, Hey, summer's coming. Or for, if you're in a winter state, winter's coming, you make sure your pipes are protected. We offer inspection, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But you can offer, um, just advice, offer different tips that they can do, but you want to stay in front of them. Because one of the best analogies, I don't remember where I got this from, but I love this analogy. 
of the cherry analogy. So uh, 10% of people that come to you, whether it's through your website, they call your phone, 10% are going to be cherry pits. They're, they're just junk. They're never going to use you. They're never going to want to use you. They're just wasting your time. So just throw them out. Don't spend any extra time or investment in them. 10%, another 10% are going to be red ripe cherries. They are ready to buy now. Their pipes just blew up. Their hot water heater's out. Like they need a plumber yesterday. Okay, 10%. The majority of your business is going to be the other 80%, which are green cherries. They're not ripe yet, but they will be. And that could be six months from now. It could be two years from now. And so if you can have everything built up and ready where you, let's say they're a green cherry, which is 80% of those people, they go to your website. They're interested because maybe they're they're building a house and they want you to do their plumbing when they build this house in a couple of years when they save up enough money. Well, if you've been emailing them, Every month for two years with just something random to keep the name in front of them. They finally go to build a house. They go, oh, I want to use XYZ Plumbing over here to do it. Because, man, they've just been on top of it. They've always been sending me information. Like, that's what you want. You want people, you want to be in front of people's eyeballs. And you focus on the 80% of those green cherries. And not just the ones that are calling you and buying you, buying right away. Because they're just a very minute uh, group of people that are using your services. So, in a quick recap for you guys, okay? Because if you don't have any of those things, you need those on your website. And if you need help, of course, give us a call. We can help you with that as well. Uh, but other than that, I really just want you guys to have it because they work. So, quick recap. Logo. Top left of your website. Very top right. Call to action. What is that action that you want them to do on your website? And they scan to the, the diagonal and that Z pattern. A couple sentences. It is clear what it is you do, that problem you solve for your customers. It's right there. Focus on it. Don't just write it in 10 seconds. Really focus on it. Ask some people. Just ask some people from a friend group, your church group, neighborhood, whatever it is. Say, hey, what does this answer? Does this say what it is I do? Like, would you read this and tell me what I do? That would probably be your best bet. And if they're like, uh, do you do this? And they're not confident, rewrite it. You want to make sure it is so, so clear. Uh, so then that part, scroll down. That's where you can have, uh, you want to empathize with the customer a little bit. You know, hey, we, we understand how, how frustrating it is. We understand how hard it is, whatever it is. Okay, empathize, share just a little bit about your company, what it is you, you do and how long, maybe long you've been in business, but not, again, we don't want to share your life story. This is going to be like a one quick paragraph where you're showing the authority you have in this space. And then at the if you scroll a little further down, you want the one, two, three. How easy it is to work with me. Okay. One, schedule a call. Two, we start the work. Three, you relax, go on vacation because we got this for you. Okay, you break make something so complicated, so simple. You want that in there. And then again, all the extra pages and fluff put it at the bottom of the website. Call it the junk drawer. We don't actually call don't put those words, but it's at the bottom of the website. The junk drawer, that's where it all lives. And then the sec other last two pieces have some type of lead generator. Again, whether it's an ebook, a checklist, something that people can opt into for free, and you get their email. Once you get their email, you want to then follow up with this strand of emails that are again all pre-built. It should be made and on your website and just sitting there. Then people just opt in and boom, leads come in from that. You can then take those ebooks. You can run Facebook ads directing people to the ebook. Say, hey, we're offering this free ebook. And they go, oh, cool, free. Opt in, but boom, now you got their email. You can follow up with them. Uh, and some of you might go, like, well, I don't know if those work. I hate those. They're really annoying. The data on it is they work and they, they do, they are successful. So go off the data, use, use that um, to add to your business. And then get those emails, they're key. And just continue to be in front of those eyeballs for people. And um, it'll be a good 2022. Adding all that stuff to your website. Again, need any help? Let us know. But that is all I have for you guys today. If you have any questions, you can always reach out to us. We're here to help. And we'll be here next week with another episode. So we will see you next week on the next episode of the Finally Marketing That Works podcast. We'll see you then.